what is up, my people? It's your boy, Lou Chikuni. I am back with another episode of the Seek Things Above podcast for y'all. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, it's been a busy week, as always. Lots of stuff going on. Today, we're actually going to be discussing some CHH matters, man. We're going to be talking about a little bit about the state of CHH and just commenting on a few things that have been going on there. And um, hopefully being able to also just discuss some ways that we can be thinking that'll be healthy for us as people who um, actually support the genre and uh, believe that God has used it or is able to use it still for the good of his people and to call people towards him. So uh, with that being said, I mean, you know, first of all, um, we had earlier on this year, we had a case of apostasy, right? So we had fanatic, declare that he's no longer a Christian. That was um, in January, right? So we discussed that. We had an episode where we kind of talked about that. He uh, has since made a second video, just going a little further into some of the uh, reasons of why he said what he said. It wasn't very candid, I would say, but what he did point out is that most of what he wants to do now is just wait for y'all to get his book. That's really what he said. He's like, y'all just going to have to get the book. I'm writing the book. And he kind of mentioned that what he did before was to prepare people for the book that's coming. So we're just going to have to wait till that comes out. And those who are willing to read it, you know, will read it and then know really what his grievances are. Um, I am looking forward to checking it out for just for that reason. I, do, I wish there was a way, you know, we didn't have to kind of see like we're supporting stuff and aiding in the sales of such things but i guess there's no other way for you to know what know what the brother is is uh well the brother the former brother in christ was saying so or what he's thinking or what his thoughts are what his arguments are so we're just gonna have to purchase the book and um check it out so hopefully when i get it and i break it down for y'all y'all might not have to get it all right so we had that happen earlier this year and now it's like it just seems like stuff is just coming out. More stuff is coming out. So now there's this whole story about Gavi, who is a an artist and a producer on Reach Records, right? Really talented dude. Has made some, some dope music. Um, so this brother has been accused of some sexual misconduct. The story broke out earlier when, um, it was last weekend, when he announced he was getting a divorce from him and his wife were being uh, uh, divorced. And I think he kind of went into, so this seems to be what set it off is where he almost sounded as though his wife might be the guilty party. I think that's what the, the rub was with the person who ended up really blowing up the story, who is um, a lady that knows him. She's also in the CHH, well, not CHH world herself, but her husband is a CHH artist. And she ended up basically saying that, yo, um, this dude has been sending pictures of his private parts to women. And she talked about how she was, I, I guess, you know, obviously in, in jest, right? And in being sarcastic, saying that she's going to make a collage of that because she's an artist. And the mere fact that she says that she can make a collage of it suggests that there's a lot of women that he has sent pictures of his genitalia too. So this is within CHH. This is a CHH artist, a very well-respected artist. Again, super talented. This dude has made some dope music, right? I think he's even received some awards. I'm not sure. I don't follow everything as much as as closely as I used to, but being on Reach Records, you expect him to have done a lot. So what has happened now is that Thistle has come out and made a statement as well. He actually dropped the video. Now, Thistle is a CHH vet, okay? So he's a, he's a CHH vet, has been around for a minute, has made a lot of dope music, and this brother basically just came out and said um, a lot of stuff. He said a lot of stuff. And I think because it's him and it's coming from him, man, it has a lot of weight to it. It actually has a lot of weight to it, and I don't see any reason to doubt his statements, man. Um, there may be some things 
within the video, the first video he did, because he's since come out and do come out and done a few more. But I'll talk about the first video that he did. Um, there may be some things that you don't agree with, but his perspective of the inner workings or some stuff that's going on within CHH, I mean, it's hard to deny it, man. And I think he's a, he's a credible person to to listen to um, as a, as it pertains to that. So. What we're going to do today is actually look at a few clips of the video that he did, and then we can just kind of talk through that, and hopefully we can get to a place where we can walk out with a few nuggets, walk out with a few things that will help us to process these sort of events when they happen within CHH and how we can respond better and uh, you know, hopefully respond in a way that honors the Lord as we react to these things so let's go ahead and jump into this joint i'm gonna I'm try to get this going in here let me bring it in here for y'all all right so the first clip is about 14 minutes into the video we're not going to obviously watch the whole thing we're going to jump around and see a few spots so let me go ahead and bring this in for y'all all right okay let's go ahead and check this part out it's certain things that come along with that. First of all, as a grown man, I don't look bro nobody. You my brother. That's something I, I live by. You my brother. I ain't gonna look bro you. You ain't gonna look low you. You're a man. If you call me OG though, it's a certain thing I expect to happen from that point. If you got enough umph to come out your mouth and call me OG as a form of respect, I'm gonna expect you to listen to me when I'm telling you something right. So let me tell y'all the problem with CHH and a lot of new young artists in CHH. The OGs ain't failing CHH. These youngsters don't listen. Like I pulled several young bucks to the side and been like, bro, you about to crash. Like slow down. Like what you doing ain't cool. And a mug come right at their mouth and tell me, bro, honestly, I don't even want to hear that. I ain't even trying to listen to you. And at that point, guess what I say? Godspeed, man. You on your own. So it ain't the point that OGs is failing these young boys. A lot of these young boys don't listen because they think they know everything. See, and the reason they think they know everything is because a lot of y'all older cats sit up and gas them up and make them believe that youth is a gift that makes them superior to everybody else. Let me tell y'all youngsters something, man. You 19, 20, 18 years old, bro, you ain't even live life yet. Let me see if you still believe everything that you believe 20 years from now. When your mama didn't pass, when your daddy didn't pass, when somebody you know didn't got raped, when somebody didn't beat you out of 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars in the name of God. You heard me? Let me see how you still live in your life. You ain't even battle tested, bro. You like a new car. You look good. I could drive you off the lot. I don't even know if you're going to make it a thousand miles because ain't, ain't nobody even drove you enough yet. Y'all have lived in the security of somebody else's life your entire life. You don't even know what you built of yet. You ain't even been through the fire yet. What's the fire to you? You've been at school, people talking about you. They joning. You ain't even lived yet. You ain't been battle tested. You don't know nothing. What you know hasn't even been put to the test yet, because I'm going to tell you this right now. It's some stuff going to happen to you in this world that you going to sit back and you going to say, man, I ain't never think I will respond like that. It's some stuff going to happen to you in this world that you going to sit up and question if God even exists. Y'all stop telling these youngsters they got to go because they young. Man, y'all don't know nothing. Oh, they got to go. They know how to work the Internet. We invented the Internet. All right. Yeah, man. So I felt that part, man. I felt that part just again, just continuing with the the, the theme of the ignorance that comes with youth and um, the uh, <laughs> just just being gung ho and, and thinking that y'all know everything, man, when, when really you, you just don't. You just don't, man. Um being battle tested, man. Just that 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 terminology right there made me think of like when you sit in church, man, and you see older dudes in the church, man. When you see like a you know one of the older saints, man, with the the gray hair and the walking cane, and they just chilling in the church. They not they may not be moving around too much, doing too much, but man, when you sit down and talk to them and hear their stories, 
hear the things that they've gone through in their in their lives and they start pouring into you giving you wisdom man it just makes you it should make you just want to sit at their feet and learn from them man it should make you want to learn from them instead if you're prideful you may think that Again, they don't know what they're talking about or mistakes they made. They made them because they were just not as smart as you. But, man, it takes living life, man, and it takes going through stuff to to really know what you're made of. I mean, that's 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 uh, scriptural as well, man. I mean, the testing of your faith produces patience, right? So you got to go through stuff man peter talks about the genuine testiness of your faith you know when 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 um uh your faith i'm paraphrasing here when when your faith is tested in, 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 through the fire right you know what i'm saying so the idea being that your te- your faith is tested through the fire and what happens is just like burning gold all the uh, all the all the uh impurities come off of the gold with the fire and then what's left is is pure gold so that's the kind of faith that we're striving for, right? That that tested faith, that that faith that has stood through the fire, man. And um, yeah, young young cats just don't know what they don't know again, man. So really, really interesting that he brings that up. I I, I felt that I did feel that, man. So let's go on. Let's move on with the next part of it right here. Actually, let me move forward a little bit. It is a long video. It's like an hour twenty. And uh, to be honest, man, I think I think Twitter need to update their their live um, machinery here, man, because this joint, man, it, it's kind of like you can't even watch it at a higher speed. You can't. It's just hard that the user interface is not that great. So Twitter, y'all need to work on this joint. But thankfully, we're still able to to watch it. So let me let me bring y'all into this next part right here. Again, we're moving forward here. All right, let's go. Tested yet. Tell, Tell you something, something else, else too. too. Y'all, y'all need to stop, stop pretending, pretending like y'all, y'all doing anything y'all doing, doing for God. Because some of y'all ain't doing this for God. If you want to be an artist and you want to make money, say that. If you want to be an artist and you in this for the fame and the glory, say that. If you want to be an artist and all you care about is getting your stuff popping, say that. You don't have to hide behind God to try to get popping because let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to live that fake facade for five or ten years, if that long, for six years, maybe two. And once that fake facade is up, guess what's going to happen to you after that? You're going to start wishing you could really do what you wanted to do. And guess what you're going to do then? Oh, I got a problem with the church. I got a problem with CHH. Ain't nobody showing me no love. Ain't nobody putting me on no records. Oh, man, the OGs letting me down. Oh, they failing me. No, you're failing yourself because you lied to yourself from the beginning because you wanted to be popular and you came this route because let me tell y'all something. The church route is easy checks. It's easy checks. And everybody know that. It's easy checks. This is the only space of music that you can have zero hard ticket sales to bring somebody out and somebody going to straight give you two grand to come for a show. Ain't nobody doing that in mainstream. When people get to running their mouth talking about, oh, I'm going mainstream, I'm going mainstream. I, man, you ain't going mainstream. You coming right back over here because in mainstream, you got to have hard ticket sales In mainstream. You got to have streaming numbers in mainstream. You got to have people following and rocking what you believe. And when people rock and follow what you believe is because they connect with your content and your content that you're making isn't mainstream. All right. So. So here we go. We're starting to get into the mindset and the intentions of some of these artists, right, from from Thistle's perspective, right? And, I mean, yo, it starts to get pretty real, man. Listen, stop claiming that you're doing everything you're doing for God, is what he said. So, letting cats know, basically letting us know that there are people who are in CHH who are clearly not there to do it for for God. They're there for the fame. They're there for the success. 
And I like the point that he said where it's like after a while, you just going to disappear or you, however he phrased it. Because truth be told, man, if you're whatever career path you're in, when it gets hard, when it gets hard to do, or when it gets somehow less rewarding, at least from uh, maybe a monetary point of view or popularity wise, you just not as popping any, anymore. Right. Or whatever it is, right. When it, when things change for you and you don't have the kind of shine that you had before. The only thing that's going to keep you going, and this is for any field, man, I think the only thing that's going to keep you going is that a, is a real belief that a belief, a belief in what you you're doing, right? Like a sense of purpose, a true sense of purpose is what's going to give you the conviction to be able to fight through those times where you may not be making money or you may not be popular. You know, people just aren't talking about you as much anymore. Whatever it is, man, it is a real conviction that's required to get through times like that. So if that's not there, if that's not there, man, like you definitely are going to give up on um, whatever it is you think you're pursuing, man. So let's go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the easy checks part, man, the easy checks. I thought that was uh, that was insightful, man, because he's saying that it's easy to get on, basically, in CHH, man. Um, you know, churches, and I can see that, that some churches will have the, the budget to, for either for usually uh, to, to do stuff, to do events, and, and they'll have a budget for that. And they will be willing to give an artist, like he said, two grand, or give you a couple hundred dollars, even if you're not well known, to do an event at their at their church, man. Because they may not know you, they you may not have uh, notoriety or popularity, but they just believe that they're doing it for the good of their um, younger congregants, and they believe that you're on the same same team, right? And that's an interesting that phrase "same team" because it was a track "same team" years ago. We had a bunch of CHH guys, and it seemed like there was a whole bunch of unity. And now, uh, years later, we see that there wasn't the unity that we thought was there. But let's move on. Let us move on. So I'm going to skip forward a little bit here. And uh, I think this should be good right here. Go ahead and bring this in here. So I keep having to uh, mute my headphones when he's playing so y'all y'all don't get feedback. I hope that's working earlier on. I tested that and it seemed to be solving the problem. So I'm hoping that his audio sounds good on y'all side. So let's see what we got here on this next part. For me to lace it up for you, just being 100, moving on to the next subject. God and CHH. Jesus and CHH. This is going to hurt some of y'all feelings. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I've been involved in CHH culture now for CHH culture and church culture for, uh, what was it, nine, 2001? So what's that, 20 years? 20 years, right? 20 years. I've been involved in church culture, CHH culture for 20 years, right? I probably didn't start making music till like 2004, but I was watching behind the scenes and doing a bunch of other stuff, hanging with Flame and people I know, right? Boom. Let me tell y'all something. I've seen people over the past couple years sitting back saying, and let me tell y'all why I've been able to observe this. I told y'all I removed myself. See, people probably think I stopped making music at the level that I was making music because of, of many different reasons. But the reason was, I'm like, man, I don't want to be a part of this stuff. I don't do fake stuff well. I don't know how to get around people and smile like I like them and I don't really like them. I don't know how to be around people and pretend like I'm cool with stuff they doing and I ain't cool with it. I ain't talking about seeing. I'm talking about cats just being snakes. Just scandalous. I don't do well with snakes. Like snakes, all I want to do is cut their heads off, put them under the heel of my shoe. I don't do well with snakes or snake behavior. 
That's why I'm like, I don't want nothing to do with this. Let me tell y'all something. I've been in CH culture for years. I've seen people for the past few years talking about the reason CHH is is the way that it is is because they done took Jesus out. They took Jesus out. Let me tell y'all something. Probably gonna hurt y'all feelings and make y'all think about life a whole nother way if you were part of CHH. I done been in CH culture for 20 years. I ain't never seen Jesus behind the scenes of CHH culture. I done heard Jesus' name in songs. I done heard Jesus proclaim from stages. But there are a few times that I've ever seen Jesus uh, behind the scenes in CHH culture from a few different people. Petty D, solid Christian dude. All right, I'm going to hop back in there. So he, he does go on to name a few people. He says... Uh, Pettity talks about Canton Jones as well being a solid dude. And um, yeah, so <laughs> let's talk about this real quick. This is probably one of the most significant statements in this video. For somebody who's been in the CHH sphere for a minute, right? For a guy who's a vet who has collaborated with different people, who is well-respected, who has been on the biggest stages in CHH, who has um, made records with the top-selling CHH artists, all of that, right? For, for him to turn around after this much time, man, and, and to basically let y'all know or let us know that according to his perspective, he has not seen Jesus behind the scenes in CHH is a big deal. It's a big deal, y'all. What's interesting is that even when you watch other YouTube videos when it pertains to Christian music, you see that this problem is not just within CHH. You'll see that CCM has the same problem, according to people who've come out of it and are not involved in it anymore. Or people who actually left because of some toxic stuff within there. People who used to work in different areas of CCM. It's the same thing we're seeing in CHH, man. It's the same thing we're seeing in CHH. And he's going to talk some more about it. But this is really, this is really disturbing, man. Because if Jesus is only in the music, like people are just, it's just lip service, man, right? These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, right? As the Lord said in, in Isaiah. This is bad stuff, yo. This is really bad stuff. And I don't see no reason to not believe him. I don't see no reason to not believe him. So I'm going I'm to go, uh, let me take this forward a little bit. There's much more that can be said about that, but this is a long video. I'm trying to get through the major parts here. So let me kind of bring us forward a little bit. Let's go. Yeah, this should be good right here. All right. All right, let's check this out. do. I ain't talking about your doctrine. I ain't talking about the way you think people should believe about the Bible, because let me tell y'all something. When I say I ain't never seen Jesus too many times behind the scenes in CHH culture, I was hanging with everybody that was reformed. I was hanging with her. They could quote the tulip from the front to from the rudum to the tulum. They can quote the tulip from the rudum to the tulum, front to back, side to side. They can tell you everything about that that you need to know, the gospel of grace and this person and this person and boom, boom, boom. And then boom, you look up and they snakes. They snakes. Snakes talking about me behind my back. Thinking people ain't going to tell me about it. Talking about other people behind their back thinking I ain't going to call them on it. They snakes. Snakes on the plane, snakes on the tour bus, snakes in the grass, wherever you want to put it. So it's few times that I've ever seen Jesus behind the scenes. I'm talking about all the way down 
to the radio stations. Y'all want to talk about I saw these radio stations putting up all these posts talking about they pulling Gavi songs down and we ain't playing Gavi and we ain't doing this. Boy, do y'all know what some of them people doing that they playing? I'd have been to Christian conferences. I'd have been to Christian conferences, boy. I'd have been to Christian conferences and seen people walking around gender reversed and everybody like it's cool. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Ain't nobody even talking about it. Don't nobody even bring it up. You know why they can't bring it up? You know why most artists don't say nothing? Say the stuff I say. You know why most artists ain't never talked about the stuff that I talk about on her right now or that I've been talking about for years? Because these are the people that control their life. They control their life. They control their life. You can't say nothing about it. Because you say something about it, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to kick you out of my distribution company. You say something about it, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to kick you off the award show. You can't perform. You say something about it, I'm going to kick you off the radio station. You can't perform. You can't perform on the radio station. If you say something about it, I'm going to take away the thing that you really love because it ain't Jesus. Because if I was going to take away this stuff from you, you would keep going if it's about Jesus. Young head, old head. All right, so let me hop in here, man. So, yo, <laughs> I mean, first of all, yeah, that that's probably uh, one of the funniest parts of the video for me, man. We talking about dudes could quote the tulip from the rotum to the tutum and all that stuff. That joint was that joint had me dying, man, when I first heard it. Um, still funny. I mean, he's being funny about it, but there's something serious there, man, because he goes on to talk about how. Basically, like before that clip, right when he when he mentioned dudes like Pettity and Canton Jones, he had basically just said that everybody was telling him not to mess with, particularly guys like Canton Jones because they they weren't reformed and their theology is off, yada yada yada, that kind of thing, right? Yet, what he's saying is the guys who are supposed to have all this sound theology, the reformed dudes, the the, the the Bible heads, right? The guys who know stuff, their character and their behavior, they they behave like snakes in this point of view. Like they were not who they claimed to be, right? Talking about him behind his back. Um, I mean, he goes on further, man. He goes on further. And, and he talked about how, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this part here about the... Uh, executives executives who are walking around gender reversed or, or somebody walking around gender reversed at a conference christian conference and nobody said anything all because this people like th whoever this individual was have the power to basically kill these guys' platforms right like they can basically shut you down to where you're not getting on the award shows you're not getting um you're just not visible. You're not heard. You're not in the spaces that you need to be in order to blow up, so to speak, right? Or to or to thrive. Let me just say to thrive. So, man, this this stuff that's coming out here is super super disturbing, man. Like we we need to. This is a real moment here to just look at, look under the hood, and to really ask what is going on in the Christian music industry, man. And other industries, as he goes on to say, I think it might be on this next clip. Uh, I'm gonna let it play for a little bit and then we'll see uh, what he says here. That's why I always said what I wanted to say. What y'all gonna take from me? I done live with nothing. I done live with nothing. I done live without my mama, my daddy. Like what y'all gonna take from me? A platform? A stage? What y'all gonna take? You can't take my platform because it's open rain. You see that right now. I'm on her saying whatever I want to say. You can't stop me from doing what God called me to do. Did y'all talking about Jesus left CHH? Man. I ain't never got beat out no money by secular uh, music companies. Every time my money was up for grab, it was at the hands of a Christian company. First time I had a dealing with a Christian distribution company, they ended up owing me $30,000, $40,000. I called them for my money. They told me they ain't even had it. They ain't just beat me. They beat a bunch of us in the circle out of money. 
They probably owed us two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. But guess why nobody won't say nothing about it? Because them execs, they work at the award shows. They work at the other labels. They work at the other places. They've been beating us out of money for years. Been holding cats by the neck for years. You got to simmer down. You got to calm down. You can't say nothing. You say something, we got you. We know where to get you at. We're going to take your little platform away from you. You can't rap at the next event. You can't go on the next tour. You can't go on this tour because I know the people that's over Winter Jam. You say something about me, I'm going to say something to them. And you ain't going nowhere. I told y'all, man, I've been, I was like, I ain't going to say nothing. But if we're going to talk about it, let's talk about the whole thing. Because one thing ain't the issue. We got to talk about the whole thing. If we're going to talk about it, talk about it all. Everything. That's why artists don't say the stuff I say. Ain't nobody never had their hands over my neck. Never. Never in their life. Never. Let's talk about something else. Because I want y'all to get all the way to the end. All right. So, yeah, I guess he just continued with the same conversation here the same topic just going deeper into it man again this is where he talked about those execs and then just his own personal issue right it's something that happened to him personally being strong-armed out of some money by a distribution company man like they just didn't pay him and according to what he says he's not the only one but imagine you're dealing with a Christian company, right? You're dealing with a Christian company and they are not giving you the money that they owe you. And, and because you want to go further in your career, you can't even approach them about it in a way that might ruffle their feathers because they can shut down everything else for you. They could just, make it impossible for you to blossom and grow in that environment. I mean, that's, yo, people, brothers and sisters, that's wild. That is wild. I mean, I, I, I would suspect that there was some shady things going on just because, you know, Christians are people, right? Christians are people. We still have a sinful nature, right? As much as we are, born again, we have a sinful nature as well that we're combating. We're progressively being sanctified, all that. We're working through stuff. We all have our own mess, all that. So I would expect that there's some shady things that go on wherever, right? Wh whatever kind of Christian company, I would expect that there's some things that if you had to look at it, you'd be like, oh, that's, that's messed up. I can't believe they did that. But to this extent, I was not expecting to hear stuff like this, man. This is really... This is really bad. This is really, really bad. Um, all right. So, and he does go on to kind of talk about even like uh, another personal situation that happened to him and some other stuff here, man. Let me just play for a little bit. If we don't get to that part, I'm going to skip forward. Um, let me just go ahead and play it real quick. We talked about God at CHH, just telling y'all real rap. Few times have I ever seen God behind the scenes in the Christian industry, even when it comes to book publishing companies. I had a book publishing company. I went and bought books, spent thousands of dollars, did a new deal with a Christian publishing company, went to this man's house, ate dinner with him and his family, telling me how proud he is of me, how, how much impactful what I do is and all of this and all of that. And I'm excited thinking I'm going to get an opportunity to get my book out to the world through some Christians because I ain't want to take the mainstream route because I'm thinking the Christians going to handle me better than me dealing with them. Gave this man all my books, turned all my stuff in to me. The next week I get a letter from a company saying they bankrupt and my books and everything has been taken as a part of their property. That man knew that when he had me give him my stuff. You think they reimbursed me, gave me a check, gave me some money back? You think I got an apology? I ain't getting nothing. Bro, the Christian industry is a business. If y'all sitting at home thinking that these people, some of the people in the Christian industry ain't even Christian, first of all. Some of the executives ain't even Christian. They ain't even professing Christians. 
So if you think that you that when we start talking about canceling and throwing stuff away, like bro, the, some of the people your worship songs they ain't even Christians that's writing them songs. Like they're not Christian, they just songwriters. They just writing songs. The executives ain't executives. They just there. But cats too scared to say that kind of stuff. Because when you say it, guess what? You lose people. All right, yeah. So he just reiterated the, the same point. And again, just going further into his own personal accounts here, man, just his encounter with a publishing company that <laughs> messed him up, man. Public, public publishing company that took his book knowing that they were going to be bankrupt and then that ended up getting seized with all the other assets when they declared their bankruptcy, man. So this is wild, yo. This is really, really wild. And then to hear, I mean, I had suspected things like this, but to hear that some of the artists themselves, right? And he mentions, he, he mentioned uh, worship, worship artists here, worship singers, but some of the artists themselves are not even Christians. They're just simply songwriters. They're just songwriters who are good at writing Christian music and they're hired to do just that, right? So execs included as well. So, man, it gets, um, it's disappointing. It's disappointing, but let's move on. There's some more points here. I'm going to try and bring it forward a little bit. And uh, let's go to the next section here. Christianity, since I've been a Christian, is I've never, and I'm just being 100 with y'all, I've never seen people run towards reconciliation. I have this, I have this, um, this belief that I have about people that own guns that have never shot nobody. And this isn't blanket. This, this, this may not be for you, but like, this is something I believe, right? This isn't a universal thing, right? So if you got a gun and you shoot, right? You shoot a gun, right? At some point, you're going to have this thought in your head. Some people, not everybody. Gonna have this thought in your head like, man, I wonder what it will, I wonder how this will hit a deer. I don't hunt animals personally, just being whining. I wonder how this will hit a deer. And your mind is gonna go from, I wanna hit targets to seeing how it's gonna hit some real, to seeing how I can make a bottle explode because you got this power in your hand. And you got this power in your hand, and when you got power in your hand, you want to use it. When you got power, you want to use your power at some point. It's just like when you're working out and lifting weights. I'm going to be 100 with y'all. Like, bro, I'll be, I, I, I be, I be working out now, right? Y'all to see I done lost all this weight. I go to the gym. I be hitting my little push-ups with the, with the thing, and I lift my weights. And then after a few days, once the muscles kick in full throttle, I be like, oh, wait, boy. want to just hit the wall, see if I put a little dent in it. When you got power... You want to exercise your power. You want to use it. One of the things that Christians cling to, they want to use that power to discipline you. It's the one thing that's sitting there hanging there. They like, oh man. When you learn your church infrastructure, they teach you. They teach you this in church infrastructure. They they like, oh man, we got this facet, we got that facet, we got that, and just just in case we ever have to, we got church discipline. That's only if we have to, man. Now you get to exercise all the other things on a regular. You got teaching, you got this, you got exhortation, you got all of these things going on. The only thing that sits in the cut that's rarely get to get used is church discipline. One of the things that I've seen in Christian culture and CHH culture is people run. They run to discipline you. They run to exercise the authority over you because you have sinned. We run to it. 
And let me tell y'all something I learned over time. And I'm going to tell y'all the truth. All right, just going to jump in here real quick. So this is actually a pretty interesting analogy that he uses here, man. So basically he has this, he says he has this little thought about guns, right? About people who own guns. And the basic premise is this. He's just saying that if you have a gun, like the gun makes you feel powerful, right? Like you you recognize once once you start firing the gun how powerful it is. And then then you have this suspicion or this curiosity, I should say, of what would happen if you hit a deer or if you hit this or you hit that, right? And basically what's happening to you is you have this desire to use that power that you have. Right, this powerful thing that you have, you just want to use it. So what he does is he equates that power that's found in like in owning a firearm to church discipline. So basically, like he's saying, like church discipline is like a it's like a gun in the Christian's drawer, right? It's it's a gun in the Christian's drawer, and they don't get to use it a lot, but they know it's uh Perhaps, I mean, I guess they know it's powerful, but they just want to see what happens when they use it. But they know it's powerful. And because people don't get the opportunity to use it a lot, when the opportunity arises, they jump at the opportunity to use that power on somebody, which is church discipline. Um, Now, I mean, I find it interesting I can't, I mean, this is his perspective, so I can't necessarily, if he's, if this is what he's seen, then this is what he's seen. Um, I think that the, the the opposite could be true where you could be in circles where it's always be gracious to other people, be kind, be loving, be all of that, and you don't get enough of the discipline. But you could be in a culture where a church, a local church culture or ministry culture that does wield the weapon of discipline wildly, right? Like they just, they just use it whenever the opportunity arises. That, that could happen again, because you're dealing with sinful people, right? But it's interesting that he said that as it pertains to this case, now I will say that he did not this is this is important to say cuz I don't want to take you know this out of context or anything like you should just go ahead and watch the whole video if you want to see the entirety of every, everything that he said he did make sure that he pointed out early on that he was not this is not a defense of Gavi this is not a uh brushing aside of the things that he's been accused of And he also mentioned about his own personal because of uh, his own a family member being sexually assaulted, how these things are very close to his heart and he doesn't mess around with it. So I do want to say that, too, um, so that y'all are aware of that. But but as I said, watch the whole video then you can hear the entirety of what he's saying. So when he's talking about the church discipline, he's not saying that there shouldn't be any um, that that it's too much. He's not saying that it's too much. And it's wrong to necessarily do it all the way if you listen to the whole video. But I think he's just pointing out that, man, this thing could be misused. It could be misused and it's being misused. And I think that according to what he's seen within the CHH realm, it has been misused. So let's move on and uh, see what he says on this next part. And then I'll probably skip us forward as well. People that go, I've seen this. Uh, God, let my words come out humble and with wisdom because I'm about to say it. I remember when I first came into the CHH coaching. The reform people 
you had the reform group of people that in CHH that kind of clung around cross movement, right? They they clung around cross movement and and, and, and everything that cross movement implemented. Then it came a point where they clung around uh, Reach Records and, and, and probably people like me and, and people I knew. And they clung around. Now, y'all can ask my friends this. I've always been behind the scenes saying, I don't believe that. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's cool. I don't think that's that. We run to exercise discipline. I've seen dudes for years, bro, for years, run to exercise discipline on other people when at the same time they should be the person being disciplined. I've learned some over the years. Whenever you see a person, most cases, if you see a person going too hard about something, when it's a sin thing, when they just attacking, 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 attacking a sin issue, man, nine times out of ten, they doing it they sell. They involved in it. They doing it. Full throttle. Involved. And you try to take that attention from yourself. I'm going to tell y'all something else. And he can, you know, I'm catching on me. Fanatic, right? When Fanatic made his announcement, when Fanatic made his announcement that he no longer believed in Christianity, I wasn't shocked. Never was surprised. At all. It didn't shock me. I wasn't caught off guard. Like, oh my God. Fanatic don't believe it. In Christianity no more because I've been telling people something for years it don't matter how much you know intellectually if it ain't connecting with your heart you don't really believe that you can make your mind you can take anything into your mind an atheist can learn the Bible a devil can learn the Bible you can take anything into your mind that you want to anything you can learn anything you want to learn. You don't even have to believe it. You can sit up and read the Bible for the next 70 years. If it don't go from her to her, you never believed it. All right, yeah, so this portion... I mean, pretty plain, self-explanatory here, man. I mean, he's talking about, um, I would say, I mean, the interesting thing is how he kind of starts off over there where he says that people who talk about certain sins or emphasize certain things a lot, they do it because they themselves are guilty of those things. That hasn't been something I've seen necessarily in my experience. Uh, I've seen... I think I've seen stuff like that before, but I wouldn't say that it's the norm. But again, this is his perspective. This is where he's, uh, how he's viewing it. He's talking from his own experience. So we can't deny or we can't refute what he's saying without knowing his exact, uh, seeing all the things that he's seen, right? I don't know if it's objective or not, but that's 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 him seeing what he's seen um, as it pertains to that. But I think the point of it, of what he's saying is that people talk, they can talk a lot and act like they're somewhere that they're not. I think that's what we need to see. Whether you agree with him all the way is to see that part of people can talk a lot and act like they're a certain way when they're not really there. And then he goes on to mention fanatic actually. And he talks about fanatic and mentions that, the whole thing of having all this head knowledge, but it's not connected to the heart, right? There's no, there's no heart connection. There is no conviction. There is no, I believe this with my entire being and I'm willing to, you know, die for it. There's none of that. There's none of that. And um, yeah, that's hard to argue. That's hard to argue when, if, you know, he obviously walked away, uh, Fanatic walked away, and we're seeing, we've seen a lot of very intellectual people, very knowledgeable people, people who knew the word, people who were not um, in bad churches even all the way, um, 
walk away from from Christ. So that's true. That's true. If it's not connected to the heart, if it's not leading to faith, man, if there's no faith behind it, then it's nothing. It's just knowledge. It's just information. And anybody can have that information. So, all right, let's see where we're at in this. Um, we'll go ahead and... All right, I just want to move this along a little bit. Move it along a little bit, man, because I don't want this to be too long. You can sit up and read the Bible for the next 70 years. If it don't go from her to her, you never believed it. It wasn't real. I've been telling people for years, intellect don't make you a Christian. It don't make you solid. That was the problem with the first era I came in with. The first era that I came into, into CHH, it was all about intellect. It was who knew what and how much they know and how much they can quote the Bible and how much they can recite and how much can they do this and, and, and let them talk, let them talk, let them talk. And you took a bunch of people, a bunch of youngsters, and you put them on a platform and you let them talk with nobody challenging the heart, nobody challenging nothing. And at the end of the day, you got a bunch of people that had stuff in their head that they didn't have in their heart and now they they gone because it was right here and it wasn't there the new problem you have is you got the old heads now pulling in the youngsters that don't even have it in their heart or their mind they just got talent Oh, you got talent. You can rap. Oh, he can make a dope hook. I can put him on a song. He can blend in. He can this, that, the other. I watch some of the stuff that y'all say on the internet and out of the mouth flows the abundance of the heart. You can't hide who you are. You can only hide who you are for so long. All right, so let me hop in here. So, yeah, man, this is a very interesting little uh, portion right here where he talks about when he came into CHH, that it was all, the first era was all intellectual, right? So it was cats who praised or they elevated dudes who had a lot of Bible knowledge, right? Or who knew their theology, who were, had that sound doctrine going. And then, now the problem is... <laughs> You have dudes that don't even have, they don't have the knowledge, no, nor is it connected to their heart, but what they have is talent. So now what's being elevated is talent. People are being propped up who have no grounding whatsoever, man. And this goes back to something that I always say, man, for a lot of people, man, I always say, like, look, man, when you first come into the faith, man, if you were somebody who was into Christian, if you went to hip hop and now you're a believer and you want to get into the CHH realm, I always say, man, like, look, I always advise cats, take your time, take some time to learn about the scriptures first, grow in your faith before you actually start rapping. You know what I mean? Get get discipled in the church. Get 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 settled down. All that before you actually start rapping. And this is why. This is why, man. Um, if you're just pulling people into into the studio and they have no real robust faith whatsoever, then of course stuff like this is going to happen, man. I mean, um, as far as people falling into various sins and stuff, just that whole thinking behind it, man, that there's actually dudes who are in here who have that talent now. So we're not even talking about dudes who are just babes in Christ. We're talking about guys who are very talented, but they are not even believers at all are in this category too. So very eye-opening stuff, man. Very eye-opening stuff. All right, we're going to bring it in over here. Let's see what this next portion is. Because it's important. I feel like the church as a whole, right? I feel like the church and Christian culture, I feel like we have allowed 
all of these different subcultures and movements to infiltrate the way that the church handles Christian business. I feel like the church has allowed several different outside movements and cultures dictate the way that we handle church business. Cancel culture has infiltrated the, uh, the church and the church handles the way they handle Christian business from a cancel culture point of view. The feminist movement has infiltrated the church and CHH culture and we handle church business based off of those constructs. Black Lives Matter, quote unquote, y'all know me, I be online going in about racial issues. But I also tell brothers at the same time and sisters, if I'm a true believer and I love Jesus and this brother is claiming that he's my brother, I'm held responsible to how I should handle him, not how, how he handles me. I'm held responsible for how I handle myself, not how somebody else handles me. Now, you ain't going to walk all over me. You ain't going to disrespect me. And you ain't going to put your hands on me. Right? But I'm held responsible of how I move. And every time the Bible tells you to move in a situation, it says be at peace with all men if you could be at peace. Right? The Bible calls for reconciliation. We have to, if, you, if, if I'm, I ain't saying y'all, we, if we don't get a hold of this, if we don't get a hold of this, you won't be able to differentiate the difference between how the church handles issues and how the world handles issues. Now, all right, I'm just going to hop in over here. So this is another significant part of the video right here to me, man, where he just talks about the feminist movement, how cancel culture and how even, um, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't want to assume what his views are as far as justice goes and, and all of that, but he did mention, he put air quotes even when he mentioned the black, black lives matter. And, um, just basically saying that then the point he's making is that we are adopting ideologies and the ways of doing stuff that is not biblical. And that this stuff is, I mean, it's, it's obviously not biblical, but it's blatantly, it blatantly belongs to the world. It's blatantly what we're seeing in, the culture out there. And this is how things are now being done in the church It's permeated the church. This is something that I've actually been saying with, within my circles of friends and uh, people who I'm close to. And many people have said this, uh, many people are saying this, where uh, this is, this is just the reality of it, man. This is just the reality where we find that even pastors, right? So even pastors have to tiptoe a lot of times when they're addressing their congregations because they don't want to upset people at times, right? So they don't want to offend people in certain ways. So they so they tiptoe. And I'm not saying it's right for pastors to do that or even to, to feel like they need to do that, but it is happening. And all this is because we have this soft, this sort of softness, this, this very super sensitive sensitivity to being uh, made to feel uncomfortable. And we take great offense to it, or people take great offense to it that people in the church leaders and, and otherwise uh, just other people who, you know, again, elders or somebody who has, who is knowledgeable about something can't just be direct anymore because they might offend somebody. And um, it's almost like pa pastors basically have to give trigger warnings now when they preach. I mean, it's insane. It's insane. I mean, 
Christianity is going to be offensive, right? I mean, it's <laughs> the gospel is offensive. So by extension, there's a lot of things within the Bible that are, are going to be um, offensive. And that's just a reality. So, I mean, I could say a lot more about it, but we're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving. But just to wrap up that portion, I mean, I, I completely agree with this. I think this was a very significant point that he made. And he's basically talking about, before he gets to, to this portion, I think he talked about how the information about Gavi came out. And he was basically saying that, that it wasn't done in a way that was um, Christ-like, if I'm not mistaken. That might be coming later, but we're going to jump forward a little bit. I'm going to say all of this. I don't even want to, I'm not going to, I don't want to say the girl's name. I'm not addressing her publicly. <laughs> like, I don't want to go back and forth with no, I'm not. First of all, I'm not. I'm not going to go back and forth with nobody, but I want to say this. There's a biblical way to do things. A biblical way. And I think several cases on her, the ball was dropped. So I ain't just going to mention her and not mention the other ones because that would be unfair too. I think the ball was dropped by reach records. I think they dropped the ball, just being 100. When I read their press release, when I read the part that said, we've known about these some of these things or whatever the things for a year, I said, they dropped the ball. And I don't feel like they dropped the ball necessarily on kicking him off the label, but they dropped the ball on the part of intervening the way the Bible says, and I'm going to read the scriptures to talk about that, right? They dropped the ball. Reach Records dropped the ball for Gavi. Gavi is personally responsible for his own business. If you didn't hear what I said at the beginning, you can go back and watch it. One of the things I don't have, I, like I work on my heart with is having a place in my heart. They did. You can say not true, sis. I'm going to tell you what I think. You want to talk about what you think? Do your life. They dropped the ball, right? If I've known for a year that you had certain situations going on that could lead you to this point, but I still employ you. I still push you to the forefront of things. I put you on a tour flyer. And then when this comes out, I instantly say, yeah, I dropped the ball. That's my personal belief. That's what I feel. I, I appreciate Cray for saying they didn't know about certain points. I don't even know all the, I don't even know all the information that's going on. I don't even want to know all the information that's going on, being 100. I don't even want to know all the information that's going on. That ain't my business. All I know is people say he did what he said he did. They got proof that he said he did what he did. When it come to things of people being sexually abused and assaulted, I don't really, I don't really act like, I, like I fight in my heart to have this whole grace level. All right, so let's hop right back in there, man. So this is where he, again, so just connecting with how the news was broken out and then going into now talking about reach records. He's just basically saying, like, the ball was dropped on several, several stops along the way. The ball was dropped, basically, and that reach records – dropped the ball. And honestly, when I, this was one of my first thoughts when I heard this whole situation, because how I, how I was made aware of it was first Rapzilla posted that Gavi was getting a divorce, that he was getting a divorce and that there were some allegations also made about him, the ones we've already mentioned. That was the first post that came out. Then it was, so this was now, you know, making its rounds on social media, making a bunch of noise, and people were talking about it. Then it was just hours later when Rapzilla released 
another post saying that Gavi was now being taken off the label, right? That he had now been removed from Reach Records. So you couldn't help but feel like Reach Records' response was reactionary, man. Like it was very um, more of a response to how people viewed the whole situation as opposed to a proactive, very hands-on, very let's nip this thing at the bud kind of approach. You couldn't help but feel that way. Now, we don't know everything. This will say he doesn't know he doesn't know everything. Fair enough. Uh, we don't know anything, everything either. We're just taking it by what we're seeing over here, right? We're taking it by what we're seeing over here. And this is, um, I mean, it's cause for concern. It is cause for concern because it starts to, and he's, he's going to connect this to uh, the church. I think I'm going I'm to just let it play here. The reason I said they dropped the ball is this, is because of this very reason. If there was enough being said to make me believe that you were doing things that could tarnish what I'm doing and you're doing, somebody should have did more digging and investigating. I'm talking about as a whole because I've seen so many situations be mishandled, especially something that is this serious and that important. If somebody came to me right now today and told me that one of my peers was doing X, Y, Z to women, bro, the first person pulling up on them is me. I'm pulling up on my partner. We don't play like that. My partner, I don't care. My all right, so he just continues, man. It's 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 all basically just again about this hands-on approach that was not there with uh, Reach Records and, and the seriousness of the, the nature of this particular sin issue, right? Is that it hurts other people? So because it hurts other people, you want to stop somebody if if you're able to stop somebody you know from doing something that's going to harm another individual, you ought to be able to, you ought to be willing to, you got to be hands-on and be aggressively wanting to get your, get close to that person and tell them, look, you cannot keep doing what you're doing. Like, this is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. And it's not just for the sake of the person doing it. It is for the sake of the people that they might hurt. So that's a great point that he makes there, man. Let's move this along. No, we've gone much longer than I expected to. So I'm going to jump on to, I think, another great point that he makes in this video. So on the next part that I want to talk about is one of the most disheartening things of it all, uh, honestly, was this part right here. I got online and I seen so many Christians, quote unquote, cracking jokes. Uh, all kind of jokes about Garvey and his pictures and woo woo and, and I was just like man I'm like okay what if this is my closing point too what if Gavi is really a Christian I'm like what if he's really and I'm a, some of the people I saw throwing rocks don't need to throw none like I'm just gonna be 100 don't throw them I said, what if Gavi is really a Christian? Hypothetically thinking, right? What if Gavi's really a Christian? What if Jesus has really saved him? What if Jesus is really going to reconcile him? And he's still going to be a part of the body of Christ, right? I don't think people take it serious enough when you say, this is my brother in Christ. I don't think people take it serious enough when you say Ephesians 13, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. I don't think people take it serious enough when the Bible says that I'm going to finish the work that I started in you. I don't think people take it serious enough, right? Proverbs 24, 17 says, 
Do not rejoice when your enemy falls and let not your heart be glad when he stumbles. Lest the Lord seize it and be displeased in you and turn his anger from him to you, right? <laughs> Do not rejoice when your enemies fall unless God see it. And he turned his wrath from you, from them to you. Yo, so this part right here, I thought was one of the most powerful points in the actual entire video right here, man. So let's look at it. So he says, what if Gavi is really a Christian, right? What if Gavi really is a Christian and Jesus has died for him? Now, he's going to talk later about other guys in, in the Bible who I think we're probably not going to go over that for the sake of time. But he talks about how other guys in the Bible, if you had to look at their lives, he talks about how David, if you look at what David did, you looked at his life. If you look at even Peter at some moments and other people in the scriptures, man, if you look at their lives and if you if you just stop at that one spot where, so for instance, where David has Uriah killed so that he can take Bathsheba as his wife. If you look at just that, there's no way that you would think that this dude could be as God called him, a man after his own heart. There's several other examples in the scriptures that you can take of, of people who, who did things and, and it was like really just, I mean, out of this world kind of like, what were you thinking? Like, how, are you serious right now type of thing? Like you, you just, if it was today, like they would straight up just be canceled immediately. Right. No questions asked if you had to stop right there. But there is more to their stories. And. In like manner, looking at Gavi's situation. Right. So if we just stop right here and if we just. If he is a believer and this is all we look at and we just take this and we just judge him for this and almost kind of write him off. Then we are sinning we are sinning we're actually we're, we're offending god because this is one whom he died for and he actually says that if you if you mocked gavi right if you mocked gavi in this process and people actually did mock him online then you sinned against jesus deep thought Something, something to very, very, uh, to take very seriously because it, it lets us know, man, like we cannot just talk any kind of way about fellow believers. We can't talk any other, any, any way we just feel like about people when they do stuff wrong. We still have to undergird everything we do with love. Love is the basis. Love is the thing that holds it all together. And we ought to take a step back and examine ourselves when these things kind of happen. You may not be struggling with the same sin that he is, but there are areas that you are weak in and you are also prone to, to, to fall or to do stuff that makes you even shake your own head. Like, why am I doing this? Why can't I stop doing this particular thing? So, this was a good point, man. This is a really powerful point that he made. I think that's probably the last one we're going to look at for this video. There's another 20 minutes, I believe, that uh, he closes with. This is pretty much his last point, but there's, there's, you know, a lot, a lot to it. As I said earlier, check the video out for yourselves. I will put the link in here. But with all of that that we have just seen, right, having seen all these clips from this video. What can we do? So we now have questions. We now are trying to process 
how we can respond to this, man. Because as he mentioned before, like, this is not the first time this has happened, and it probably won't be the last time this has happened. This is going to happen, sadly. So when we do see things like these occur within CHH, what are we going to do, and how do we respond? So just a, a few quick thoughts here. As mentioned earlier, firstly, speak the truth and admonish in love. That's the first thing we do. We always make sure that our speech is undergirded by love and we approach all things as far as it pertains to criticism or even rebuke with that spirit, right? Secondly, we can't be fearful like the world of calling things what they are, like for the sake of we don't want to trigger somebody, we don't want to offend somebody. No, you need to call out sin, you know, call things what they are. If somebody has sinned, we need to call it sin. We need to also make sure that they're aware of the seriousness of that sin. And if they name the name of Christ, we need to let them know, man, that you are grieving the Holy Spirit. You are trampling on the salvation you've been given by thinking that you could just go on willfully sinning right now. And you are tarnishing the name of Christ to the world that is looking on upon you instead of making Jesus look good right now, you're making Jesus look pretty bad. You're making Christians look pretty bad by what you're doing. So we need to call things what they are, right? Another thing is I think we need to stop idolizing people who have platforms, right? We need to stop idolizing Christians who have any kind of platform and thinking that they are super Christians, right? I remember earlier on in my walk, man, like just looking at certain dudes as though they were like they were S tier Christians, man. They were upper tier Christians. And I was just like down here and wanted to get to their level. And it's good to have people to look up to and you say, hey, man, I want to be able to quote scripture like this person, know the Bible like this person, you know have, you know, humility like this person, so on and so forth. But we can take those things and turn them into, turn that whole thing, that that uh, good desire into idolatry, man. And we can start looking at these dudes like they're, they're not even human. You know what I'm saying? They're a little, they're a little better than human. They're not just mere mortals. So, Stop idolizing people who have platforms, man, Christians or not. We need to just stop doing that. Recognize that they're sinners and they're susceptible to sin just like any one of us. And if any, if recent times hasn't caused us to reach this conclusion, man, where there's been Christian leaders who have fallen, there are guys with huge platforms who after their death, man, we came to find out disheartening information about how they conducted themselves, right? If all of these things don't cause you to step back and say, hey, man, these dudes are just human. Let's take what's good from what they're teaching. Let's take that and, and apply it to our lives. But let's not look at these dudes like they are above anyone else because of the knowledge that they have or the platform that they have. So said enough about that. The other thing is let's not tear down each other, right? Let's not tear down people. And what, what's, the, what's the biblical basis for not tearing down somebody? It's not just that so, you know, it's, it's bad to be angry or it's not good for you to be fighting with people. It's not, it's not a good look. It's, it's deeper than that. It's because you are sinning against image bearers of God, Right? You're sinning against image bearers of God when you tear somebody down, when you mock somebody, insult somebody. If that person is Christian, that even is a higher level because now you're sinning against somebody who Jesus died for. Somebody who is sealed with the Holy Spirit who, and you know, God is very zealous for his people, right? 
we like to think God is zealous for his people when we're only thinking about ourselves. But remember that he is zealous for all his people, for all his children. So let us not tear down image bearers of Christ, image bearers of God, especially those who name the name of Christ. Right. Let's not do that. Take heed lest you fall. All right. Take heed lest you fall. That's another thing I would say. Do not become puffed up because you don't suffer the issues that someone else suffers, right? Don't become puffed up. This is a moment of self-examination. This is a moment to cause us to assess where we at, to even actually go and approach other people, man, and say, hey, man, like, we all should have some form of, of accountability in our lives anyway, right? So these are the times where we talk to the people who we trust, who we know are wise, and approach them and say, hey, man, you know, have you seen any things in me that I need to be, you know, working on or that sort of thing? Like having the humility to ask even your friends, your, your Christian, your wise friends who are in the church. Right. And that's another thing in the church, in the church. You have to be in a church. Right. You can't just be a Christian out there, Lone Ranger Christian out there. That is not a biblical thing. You need to be in a church and it is in a church context where you will get healthy, biblical, and hopefully loving confrontation that is going to cause you to shake up. That's going to shake you up and cause you to hopefully respond by addressing areas of your life that you are, you know, falling short in or sin areas that just need to be put to death, you know what I'm saying? Like works of the flesh that you just need to put to death. So those are some of the thoughts I have, man, on things that we can be doing and ways that we need to respond whenever these sort of situations arise. Definitely leave me some comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on various parts of the video. Let me know if you watched the video already, what you took away from it. As I said, it's a long video. There's a lot more stuff that was on there. So if there are any other parts that stood out to you, I'd love to hear about that. And also, I, I may check out the other ones that, that uh, Thistle did. I know he did two more videos. Might check those out and do a quick breakdown. We have a lot of content planned for the weeks to come. So keep checking us out over here at Seek Things Above TV. Make sure that you like, subscribe. And ring the bell, man. The bell is super important. Ring that bell, man. Ring that bell so you can be notified when we drop new content, all right? Um, but otherwise, man, I do appreciate y'all taking your time and checking this uh, content out. If you're listening to us on the podcast, we have the audio available on various platforms um, that, you know, do the podcast as well. So definitely check us out if you prefer just to listen to audio. But with that being said, man... Appreciate y'all. And just remember to seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. All right. God bless y'all. And I'll see y'all in the next one.